In 2023 and 2024, India witnessed record-breaking heat with its health system feeling the strain. Several Indian cities witnessed early arrival of heat waves with increased severity and frequency. For instance, a record-breaking 39-day heat spell from May 13th to June 20th in Delhi turned the city into a virtual furnace with temperatures consistently exceeding 40 degrees. These conditions were not just confined to Delhi. Several Indian cities faced similar harsh conditions, forcing citizens to confront the dire consequences. The India Meteorological Department and the Ministry of Earth Sciences reports a 62% increase in heatwave-related deaths over the past 20 years, driven by 138% rise in the heat waves. Delhi alone recorded 270 deaths by mid-2024. Can we actually reverse the devastation of these extreme heat waves? Do we have adequate adaptive measures and infrastructure in place? Stay with us as we explore these crucial issues and uncover what's at the stake for our future. Hello, I'm Dr. Nimesh Gupta, Deputy Program Manager working with Green Building and Sustainable Habitat Program at Center for Science and Environment. So let us first understand how exposed we are to the heat. To grasp the full extent of heat exposure, let's delve into some revealing findings. CSC examined heat patterns in nine Indian cities, which includes Pune, Kolkata, Chennai, Bhubaneswar, Delhi, Nagpur, Jaipur, Ahmedabad, and Hyderabad over a decade. The analysis showed that during peak summer months, over 90% of the geographical area in seven of these cities experienced extreme heat. Additionally, five cities had around 80% or more of their regions facing recurrent heat stress, indicating that the residents endured prolonged heat exposure. Nagpur and Ahmedabad were particularly affected with over 95% of their area exposed to high heat. Humidity can offer some relief, but once it crosses a threshold, it worsens the heat. These extreme conditions are becoming more and more frequent and are extending into previously pleasant seasons, exacerbating the discomfort. That's because of something called the heat index. The heat index tells us how hot it feels when we combine the air temperature with the humidity. Think of it as a nature's way of saying it's not just hot, it's sticky. This chart helps us understand the risk level of heat-related illness. The higher the heat index, the more precautions we must take. While Earth's temperature naturally fluctuates over the time, the current rate of increase is unprecedented, pointing to significant human contribution to excessive heat. A significant factor behind this crisis is the declining green and blue infrastructure, like parks, trees, and water bodies. Not just in one, two, or three cities, the analysis reveals a troubling trend with all the nine cities revealing a decline. In their place, heat-retaining materials like concrete and asphalt have come up, trapping heat and making cities extremely hot. This trapped heat bounces from one surface to another, creating hot spots and developing a phenomenon called urban heat island, where the temperatures in the city centers are significantly higher than in the rural surroundings. Regardless of climate or geography, the materials used for construction usually have a heat-retaining property. Absorbing heat during the day and gradually releasing it at the night, keeping the temperatures elevated around the clock. Nighttime temperatures are particularly concerning, offering no respite from day's heat. The urban heat island effect is specially pronounced at nights. An analysis shows that the risk of mortality is 50% higher on hot days with hot nights compared to hot days with cooler nights. However, 
if the impact of climate change is mitigated the risk of having warming nights with temperatures exceeding 25 degrees celsius could be reduced by 32 percentage in our expanding cities high rise buildings especially ones those are beyond the cooling influence of green and blue infrastructure exacerbate the heat effect for example while both a low rise and a high rise building might have shaded lower floors the high rises is upper floor would be exposed to more direct sunlight which increases the heat gains unthoughtful urban planning typically hinders natural wind flow resulting in stagnant air reduced ventilation that intensifies heat accumulation leading to higher temperatures surfaces directly exposed to heat such as uncovered parking lots barren areas metal roofs significantly contribute to heat these surfaces absorb and radiate heat turning them and their surroundings into heat sinks which exacerbates the urban heat island effect all of these factors like concretization high fabric density unplanned layouts and exposed surfaces often lead to heavy reliance on air conditioners this creates a dual problem it not only boosts the greenhouse gas emissions but also releases additional heat outdoors further intensifying the heat issue moreover air pollution and heat are closely linked areas with high air pollution levels often experience higher temperatures due to pollutants trapping the heat near the ground but all is not lost we can craft a recipe of cool to combat the crisis we have to work upon various elements at three levels urban cover urban structures and urban metabolism at the urban cover level a comprehensive approach to urban planning is crucial master plans must integrate climate action focusing on enhancing and expanding blue green infrastructure which offers benefits like improved air quality and heat reduction in urban structures we need to incorporate passive cooling elements like chhajjas awnings and vertical greens additionally the rooftops should be upgraded with cool roofs green roofs or covered with reflective paints moreover a critical focus on urban design is essential with building codes incorporating compact designs optimizing urban morphology streetscaping and utilizing nature based cooling measures we must think beyond concrete integrating sustainable and climate specific building materials and designs that offer thermal comfort thus reducing reliance on mechanical cooling systems in terms of urban metabolism agglomerating cooling demands for the efficient utilization of technologies like not in kind cooling systems which release comparatively less heat into the environment can further reduce the heat impacts additionally offsetting anthropogenic heat through higher penetration of renewable energy sources such as solar thermal solar pv and biomass and increasing reliance on technological interventions that supports efficient cooling could significantly reduce the temperatures as the heat wave continues its grip it's clear our cities must adapt and innovate the challenge is immense but with the right strategies we can mitigate the heat and create urban spaces that are resilient and livable in a changing climate the fight against heat wave is a fight for our future